I have the great pleasure to introduce to you the host of um, this masterclass. Like uh, in the last year, we um, are very happy to have here a famous um, critic from Britain, living in Switzerland now, and a great expert of author cinema. He has written many books about many great authors, Peter Cowie. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome everyone to this Zurich Festival Masterclass. Um, there's no doubt that in the last 30 to 40 years, uh, Iranian cinema has really excelled virtually all filmmaking in the Middle East. There's a consistency about it which has revealed to us many, many uh, major directors, uh, whether it's Abbas Kiristami, uh, Dariush Merjwi, uh, Jaffa Panahi, uh, Amir Nadiri, the list goes on. But I think none of them has analyzed contemporary society so intensely and so intelligently as our guest this afternoon, Asghar Fahadi. So Asghar, your career, I think, really took off, although you began making feature films in 2000, your career took off with the winning of the Silver Bear in Berlin in 2009 for About Ellie. And then, of course, last year, you had this extraordinary procession of awards, starting with the Golden Bear in Berlin and ending with the Oscar for Best Foreign Film in Hollywood. Um, and that makes us all curious to know how you came to be a filmmaker. You, I think you worked in theater and television to start with. Could you tell us how you began and how you fulfilled your ambition to be a filmmaker? Uh, I, I prefer uh, speaking my language, Farsi. Salam mikonam be hame, wa khoshalam ke tu in jam hastam imruz. خیلی سخته که بگم من چگونه فیلم ساز شدم بعضی موقع آدم نمیدونه که چرا تو این مسیر قرار میگیره ولی یه حدسایی میزنم من سیزده سالم بود که اولین فیلم کوتاه رو شروع کردم I started with age of 13 when uh, I did the first film. یه فیلم کوتاه 10 دقیقه ساختم. short film of 10 minutes. و یادم اون موقع به عنوان جوان ترین فیلم ساز یه جایزه هم بهم دادن یعنی اولین جایزه رو 13 ساله کی گرفتم. And I got a granny for that film. به خاطر اینکه جوان for, for youngsters. <laughs> yeah, for you. نه به خاطر خود فیلم. Not because of the film, because of uh, my age. My age. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but her soul, you don't film a cut off. And every year I made a short film. And then I started the university and studied theater. In Yikaz Buzukta, it forgot his end game. This was one of my biggest uh, happening in my life. Uh, I think there's a problem with microphone. Is it my? I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, it's I think yours. It's mine. <laughs> so. Okay. It's mine. من موقعی که تئاتر قبول شدم خیلی ناراحت شدم و فکر کردم که کاشکی همون رشته سینما میتونستم بخونم توی دانشگاه. When I was accepted at theater, 
I wasn't happy, and I thought <laughs> it would be it would have been better if I was uh, starting at the cin cinema. ولی وقتی که مشغول در واقع خوندن تئاتر شدم فهمیدم که چقدر شانس بزرگی بوده چون من با چیزی به اسم درام آشنا شدم. But when I studied theater, I actually realized how lucky I was to have started this way because I did drama and I learned drama. و بعد من به عنوان نویسنده فعالیت کردم در رادیو و تلویزیون و بعد اومدم سینما. And I started as a writer and a filmmaker, and I came to the cinema. Uh, in, uh, I, I came to theater too. I came to theater too. I came to theater too. radio, television, and then I came to theater too. Okay, I started with writing to the radio, theater, and then cinema, filmmaking. And so so uh, I, I can't say you how Uh, چه جوری اتفاق افتاد این ولی این حدسایی که من میزنم که فکر می کنم که همون دوره کودکی باعث شد که من بیام به این سمت who were the filmmakers who you admired when you were first starting out we can guess maybe but i'm but i know you like uh, the seeker and that, that time in my country was uh, a big war between iran and iraq and tv Uh, show to people uh, always uh, movies about war but uh, uh, that time was very hard for finding a good movie and uh, I, I remember uh, when I was uh, 16, 17 I watched Jessica's movie yeah, and it's my, my favorite movie and uh, Kurosawa When I came to uh, university, I watched a uh, Bergman movie, and after that, Kis Kislovsky's movie, and Three Colors. But that time for me, uh, uh, Italian director, Fellini, Ber uh, Fellini, De Sica, Antonioni, uh, I was surprised by them. You know, maybe because them, I came to this way. Because when the girl disappears in Ellie, it, a little bit reminded me of Laventura. In that way. Yeah, but uh, you know, that film, I didn't uh, watch this movie uh, <laughs> before. But I mean, yeah, you're that, attracted uh, by that kind it's of a theme. Funny because uh, I, I watched all his yeah. movies, but, be, uh, but this one I didn't see. And ah. during shooting, one of the, my crew told me, did you see that movie from uh, Antony? I, I said, no. Yeah. And they said, no, doesn't matter. And after that, I asked him why you told yeah. this to me, because he, he was nervous. And, uh, and after that, I found, oh, this subject is very similar to that one. Great and minds said, think yeah, alike. Yeah, yeah. And I said to myself, what, uh, what can I do? I watch this movie or not? If I watch and it will be very similar, I have to change this story. And it's very hard during shooting, mm -hmm. mid of shooting. So I decided uh, I don't watch this movie until after uh, finishing movie. And I watched uh, that movie and I love that movie. And yeah, in subject and some things very similar is my honor. Yeah. And uh, I love uh, his job. You go from this wonderfully exhilarating image of Ellie, so happy seeing in the kites of liberty and freedom to this panic and disaster. Someone almost did. Um, it must be a very difficult sequence to shoot with with the handheld cameras. In آخر سانه یه که ما الی رو می‌بینیم. This is the last scene we see we see from Ellie. و بعدش اون دیگه ناپدید میشه. And then she disappears. برای من همیشه آخرین تصویر کاراکترها توی فیلم خیلی مهمه. And for me, it's very important for the last uh, view from the actor. And I think I thought that after this, after this, Eli would die. And after this, I thought Eli would die. I needed a picture of this moment when he was being carried away. He was being carried away from the pressure of the situation. 
And I decided then she was becoming free. And I wanted to show it as a nice scene, the way she was running because across the water. And suddenly she says, I must go. Yeah, yeah. it means uh, uh, some, sometimes the audience ask me, did she kill herself? It's because this sentence, this dialogue. Because she says, uh, I have to go. We, we think uh, she decides to uh, die. die. There's two ways. And so uh, it, it was her last scene. And it's, uh, you feel very soon that there's a uh, happen. There's something going to happen. Until here, uh, the camera is like very classic. And when she disappears, the uh, camera uh, goes on shoulder. From uh, until the end of the uh, last scene of this movie, uh, that uh, we see her, her body. You know, and after that, again, we, the camera comes on a uh, triangle. You know. So I don't know, but we, we can talk about uh, this clips, these uh, this, um, shots, uh, these well, scenes? Well, well, maybe, maybe just the, the technique of it. I mean, you, you shot the scenes in the water, obviously, yeah. slightly different time than the... Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think for these three scenes, oh, we worked uh, more than two weeks. Because in each time in, in near the sea, the sea is, uh, has a color. At 10 o'clock, the color is green. 11 is blue. And you know, it's very difficult. It was very, very difficult. And when we went on, uh, on the sea, and shooting on the sea was very difficult. But more, than, more difficult was acting. You know, they believe, they, that time they believe uh, she disappeared and she was. They, they, they were very nervous because of this. And two weeks they came to location and because I told to them uh, they were together, Ali and other actors. And that uh, time when we start uh, shooting for this scene, I told to Ali, Tarane, don't come to location from today. And she really, she disappeared. And other crew, other actors, uh, because one month, more than one month, every day they, they were together and talked together. But suddenly, today, she doesn't be there. And uh, she, they, they believe she's not here. And they, uh, after two weeks, they were very nervous, really. And uh, you know, I think for these scenes, uh, acting was very important. Children and could they improvise? Did you allow them to improvise in the panic when they discovered them? Yeah, yeah. But uh, we had a lot of um, rehearsals before shooting and uh, uh, improvise before shooting. When when I start shooting, we don't go to improvise. And before shooting, we have two, three months. For this movie, I think three months we had uh, rehearsals like theater, and they they could. Uh, uh, improvise, but when we start shooting, uh, it's it's better we don't change anything, because for this kind of movie, if you change this puzzle here, uh, it's influence or other things, other puzzles, you know, and uh, I prefer when we go to shooting just we do, and before shooting we decide about everything. قبل از این سکانس هم خیلی سر و صدا و صحبت زیاده و اینجا یه دفعه همین ساکت میشن. Before this scene, it's very loud and then it becomes very quiet. اونجا دیالوگ های زیادی، صحبت های زیادی قبل از این صحنه میشه. And there's a lot of talk before this scene. و من اینجا نیاز به سکوت داشتم که تماشاگرم یه, یه مقدار برگرده و هم به عقب و یه فرصتی داشته باشه همه چیز رو مرور کنه دوباره. And I needed the silence that the audience would think more about, about the happening before what was happening. And the camera work seems to link them. The camera work binds them together. Yeah. The, you know, in uh, sorry, I sometimes. 
بعد از اون فارسی از این نمیشه نه نه یو نو این وین فرام فرس اف دیس فیلم دی میزان سین اند کامرا اول اول دیس کرو ار توگیدر اند استپ بای استپ وین وی گو تو اند they are separated from each other and camera is with him and after that with other but in first uh, first part of this movie until mid of movie always these people are together in sa- in same shot but right now he's alone and with him we arrive to other person and it, you know it, it it's a team it's an important team in this film because in the uh, first they are together they are in the same situation and in the end uh, each each of them goes to his way her ways and uh, in general how do you develop an idea for a film how did the idea for about Ellie come to you was it based on a novel or was it an original screenplay or? honestly i don't know really Sometimes you, this morning, in the morning you wake up and you think, oh, I have a, an image in my mind, and oh, what's this image? Or oh, why this, in, this image comes to my mind, and uh, how? And you ask about this image. But for, I, I suggest, I, I'm not sure, I suggest, it, this film comes from, from my experience uh, during when I, when I was in university in Tehran. Oh, So several my friends, we were together that time and we went to north of Iran together that time and uh, we had not like this experience but I, I loved this situation. The people going to a vacation somewhere and after that uh, in, uh, always the first of trip and end of this trip is very different. First of trip everybody are very happy and And end of trip, you know, it's very different. So I, I liked this this uh, subject, and I work on this. And uh, but I'm not sure really. This uh, maybe somebody told me his experience, his memory about uh, uh, this. Yeah. And But how long would you take to do a screenplay like that? How, how for this movie, I think it's about eight months just writing, mm-hmm. and before that, I, I, when I have a, an idea or image in my mind or a simple story, I just think. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I write something, and when I start, when I start writing, it's very serious time from morning until night, and it, for this movie it was eight months, about eight months. The result is that when you start shooting, it's very well worked out. The dialogue is all there, everything is in yeah, place. I, yeah, I prefer when, when, I, I, when I want to start filming a script, it's done. Mm. I don't want during shooting to change anything. Yeah. It's like an uh, orchestra, you know, before coming on stage, they, uh, they have rehearsals, yeah. but when they, they are on the stage, they, have to, they just do. They yes. don't. Uh, they don't have time for changing something. Yes. It's a group uh, team, like teamwork. Yes, Ingmar Bergman said exactly the same thing. It worked like that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you. I noticed one of the actors there is the main actor in a separation. He believes a younger. Am I right? The one of the, uh, yeah, the yeah. father of Asian. Payman. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about how you found him and why yeah. you work with him? Yeah, he, in about Ali, it, it's the uh, first time he's in film, he's an, uh, an actor. He was my neighbor. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And they invite me, I didn't know him, and he invited me to a party to his home. And for the first time I met him, and I, that night I told him I will write a story. I don't know what's this story, but I'm sure you will be there. And the, uh, his real name is Payman, and this, in this film is Payman. Again. Yeah. You know, and it's the first one I choose for this movie because when I met him, I recognized, oh, he's an actor. And for a separation, he came to a separation because 
you know, uh, we, we have very, we had very good experience together for about Eli. And uh, I think he's very perfect mm. because uh, his acting is very realistic. Mm. Mm. If you know my language, you can understand this very well mm. because sometimes he's saying the other, but it, it uh, doesn't look, I, I'm right this, and after that he's telling. Mm. You, you think it's all of this dialogue is uh, improvised, mm. and it's very good. I don't want somebody to, um, says to me, oh, you, you have very good dialogues, it's mm. not good. If, if people say to me, oh, all of this is improvised, mm. I, I'm very happy by this. <laughs> it's better. I think most people here this afternoon have seen a separation, so we can perhaps move on to that film, uh, which starts with a divorce hearing uh, in Iran. Um, he has, uh, this actor has a very, not unsympathetic part, but he has a very difficult part because his personality is so closed. He, he can't reveal himself, he holds himself in all the time finds himself difficult to express emotion to his daughter, for example, and, and so on. So um, right from the beginning, it's a film about uh, somehow enclosed emotion in a way. And um, I'm going to show the clip of the opening scene in the divorce hearing. Could you tell us how that works in Iran? You have a judge or, or someone, uh, 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 someone who hears uh, these both sides, and then decides if a divorce will go through or not. No, if, uh, I was telling a story to my friends, five words, and uh, I had a, an interview in France, in radio, and somebody asked me, can they, uh, in, in Iran, is there any divorce? And I surprised, and I said to her, in my country, unfortunately, the ra rate of uh, divorce is very more high. than every country in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple. Yeah. Simple, this is not very hard. Yeah. If uh, man and woman they ag agree for divorce, it's just two hours you can do this. If not, it's very uh, hard. So it's, uh, it's like, uh, France, but I don't know about here. It's like France. There's a judge, and uh, mm -hmm. they can go to judge, and uh, mm -hmm. judge decide. If they agree together, there's no problem. And judge is uh, the judge role is not important. But they don't take a lawyer. Each of them, in many countries, each side takes a lawyer. Yeah, and they obviously can, not. Him. Yeah, like everywhere, lawyers are very expensive in Iran. Yeah. And they prefer don't go to lawyer because first you go to lawyer. Any lawyer is here? <laughs> when you go to lawyer first, they say, "So I help you." And uh, what's the problem? And you say your problem is very simple problem. But and then he says, "So we go from this side to this problem." And after one hour, you think, "Oh, it's a very big problem in your life." Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. In Iran, they prefer don't go to lawyer, yeah. and uh, it's like uh, yeah. other country. But uh, what's the problem? If in if uh, there a, a man wants uh, divorce with uh, his wife, it's very simple. But if uh, a woman wants uh, divorce, it's very hard for her. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. It's a big problem, and a lot of people are trying for change this situation. Yes. yes. You know, but if they and if they if this agreement between the mm. between them, it's very simple. Well, this opening scene we're going to see actually presents that argument very forcefully that the woman has to argue all the time, very strongly, her side. Otherwise, it would go to the men. So. It's a good sequence to start a separation because it shows the two principal characters and right this, away. Yeah, and this scene, in the camera is, uh, you look at uh, the scene as a judge, you know, judge uh, position. Subjective. Yes. Subjective. Yes. And I invite audience to be ju judge, that they have judged during movie yes. by this uh, mise-en-scene, by this, uh, situation of camera, you know. You can 
see this in this. Okay. Uh, am I right in thinking your own daughter played in the film? Yeah. Was that uh, how old was she at the time? That time was 11, and uh, now she, she's uh, 14, about but 14. She's very good. I mean, it's as though she's been a child actor like Jodie Foster for years. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember Jodie Foster in Golden Globe told me, who is this, sister, this daughter in the film? She was very good, uh, and I said to her, she's my daughter. And, yeah. <laughs> and you say about oh, really? Jodie Foster. Yes, that's right, <laughs> in Taxi Driver. Um, there are so many themes in a separation. You, you really managed to get in a lot of themes. One of them that's extremely interesting, I think, is the importance of religion and how the, um, the nanny who comes to look, or the, the person who comes to look after the father uh, who is ill, uh, she is clearly a very religious person and she needs to get permission before she does anything, really, to be reassured that it's religiously correct. Now, that, that seems to be something which is in transition in Iran. I mean, that, that, that there, is, there are women who are wearing the, the, the black robe and then there are others who are, who are not. So, I mean, um, that was an interesting theme, I think, that you, that you wanted to tackle. این از اون یه کم راجع به این صحنه اول یه توضیحات بدم ممکن جالب باشه براشون. I want to explain a little bit about this scene now. و بعدش راجع به این سوال. And then about your question. من توی این فیلم تصمیم گرفتم که در همون صحنه اول سوال اصلی فیلم رو مطرح کنم. I try to you know at the beginning of the scene I want to do the question to start at the you know, beginning of the film. And the whole film is the answer key to this question. And I want to ask and the judge asks, why don't you want to stay, you know, with your husband and your child? And the rest of the movie sh shows, gives the answer to this question. And this is why it's so important to me, this first scene. That's why you put it ahead of the credits. Yeah. 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 In this case, in the first scene, یعنی فیلم از جایی تازه در واقع آغاز میشه که okay. این سحنه تموم میشه. This is like it's before actually the movie starts. Yeah, like a prologue. Yeah, yeah. prologue, yeah. و راجع به این تم هایی که گفتین بستگی داره که از چه زاویه ای میخواین این فیلم رو نگاه کنید. And about these topics that we are talking about, it depends how you look at it, from what angle you're looking at it. ممکنه یک نفر باشه در مثلا یک مثلا کوبا اصلا براش مهم نیست که راجع به موقعیت یک کشور دیگه چیزی بدونه اون هم وقتی این فیلم رو ببینه نباید ارتباطش ناقص باشه و از دست بده فیلم رو اون هم باید ارتباط برقرار کنه با فیلم um, could be somebody also from Cuba watching this film and also making connection to this film به خاطر همین اگر شما میتونید از زاویه اخلاق به این فیلم نگاه کنید and so if you can just look at it from the you know the moral moral way. moral mm -hmm. way. moral side mitunid az zaviye ravan shenasi be film negah konid from the angle of uh, psychology mitunid az zaviye siyaset ya az zaviye ijtemai negah konid also about the social and also political you can look at it the way you want to به شما مربوط میشه که چه زاویه ای میخواین که این فیلم رو ببینید. So it's the viewer who wants who is decide taking over the role. ولی اگر در واقع ممکنه یه دیام بخوام که فقط از زاویه این که ببینن که تو اون کشور چه اتفاقی میفته فیلم رو ببینن. And some people just look at it um, to see what's happening right now in Iran. Yes. برای من اون زاویه های قبلی بهتره چون چیزایی که میخوان راجع به ایران بدونن as to the internet or to the prison, we can pay the money. And for me, the previous angles are more important because 
the situation in Iran, you can also look it up in Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, well, the second clip we're going to show is uh, a similar situation. It's the quarrel in the magistrate's office. I guess you would call him a magistrate when they when they come to discuss, you know, during the second half of the film, they are called before a magistrate in a room who's clearly overworked and, and very harassed. But not bad, but would you call him a magistrate? Is that the word? Not quite a judge, but he's sitting in this small room, you know. Yeah, not, uh, in fact, it's not the Oh, it's not the courtroom, actually. No. No, it's more of a private room, but he calls people in and yeah, out, he listens to them, then he sends them out. Yeah, it's fine. If it's a good idea, it's a good system, but it doesn't work as a good idea. I'll give you a good idea. Okay, if it functions right, it's actually good. Yes. When a person goes to the hospital, before he goes to the hospital and gives him a good idea, there's a good idea that he's going to ask a good idea. Oh, okay. There's a part before the, uh, you know, the judge it goes to the court. Yes. Uh, they're looking at the, you know, the problem. Yes. And some people are working there, and they, yeah. they question them. Yes. And they, but but many of them, you know, ولی هیچ قضاوتی اینا نمیکنن اینو فقط پرونده رو میدن دست قاضی با اطلاعات بیشتر so it's like filling up a form they write and they ask questions and they give it they pass it on to the court to the judge I see who they now lies yeah. yes yeah. so could we, could, we, could we go to that clip do you mind I'm only pushing ahead because I know people will have questions for you I want them to have time to do that so let's see the second clip because in a way it relates to this first one I think a different style. Yeah, and just one, one thing I want to say, when you, not just about this film, or from everywhere, every country, if you saw, if you see a movie from India, from Iran, from, from US, Romania, it's not good, we think this image is uh, from all this country. We, we, nobody can show, can explain the situation in each country by a, by a movie. Because uh, in Iran there is 70 million people, and nobody can say by my movie I explain you and I show you a very complete image from my country. No, there is a lot of people, very different classes, different mind, and you know, it's image of part of my my country, right. you know, and about other films, other not Iranian other films. Uh, when you see this, you, you, have, you keep this in, in your mind. It's not an image of a uh, big country, all country. The gap between wealthy people and poor people. This man, on the one hand, has lost his job. He's been in and out of prison, creditors. Whereas the main characters we know are quite well-off middle-class people. There's a lot of notes and money in the house and so on. They can afford to have somebody. Is that something which is a big, big issue uh, at the moment for you? In the way between tabaqat ishtemai, the way that in the world, the world is still existing. This fight between the system is everywhere in many countries at the moment. Between uh, social classes. Uh, between you know different range of people, you know different uh, classes. Yeah. Rich, poor. But, uh, این جنگ در واقع جنگ بین ادالت و آزادی یک طبقه دنبال ادالت هن و یک طبقه دنبال آزادی Some people are looking for freedom and some, uh, some people for peace for, uh, it, a, uh, در واقع این جنگ پنهانیه پیدا نیست این جنگ It's a hidden fight mm -hmm. And what makes you, I think, makes your films really great is your compassion you're very compassionate towards your characters, and there, is, there aren't any rights or wrongs. There's any gray area, you know. The, but you can you can support both of these characters, the the, the husband and, and, and the the husband of, of the woman who's. Uh, yeah, I can say in all my movies, I don't have any character who you you, you think uh, I don't like him or her. In all my movies, everybody has rights. It's like real life. We don't say 
You, you know, it, it, it's, I, I said I said this uh, sentence several in several time in my interviews. In in the before in classic tragedy, the war and fight is between good and bad. And when you are watching a movie or theater, before you, author, director, filmmaker, they decide about who is good, who is bad, and you just watch. There is no respect to you as an audience. And in modern tragedy, this war is between good and good, and you don't know if he win, you think, oh, it's not good. If yes. other side win, it's you know, and modern tragedy is uh, between good and good, and we don't know right is with whom. And it's a very hard situation. I think all of people in these um, stories, uh, they have right. And they, they, they and in, for example, on this uh, scene, they like and they understand each other. But situation pushed them to fight, mm -hmm. you know. Because in this, for example, in this scene, that guy <laughs> asked from the other guy, mm -hmm. "Please forgive yes, uh, yes. him." That's a wonderful moment. Yeah, yeah. Because, because they they like each other, yes. but situation uh, pushed yes. them to this world. Was it Jean Renoir who said, uh, "The tragedy of this life is that everyone has his reasons," yeah. you know, and I think that applies to that that film. Um, the final clip that I've chosen is towards the end when uh, the woman uh, feels unable to swear on the Quran. Uh, and this is not only important because it's, uh, it resolves the film, but also you see them in this very enclosed small room. Uh, and it, it's a moment of, uh, of great intensity, I think. And you use the you use the set extremely well. The way the camera goes in and out of the rooms and uh, like that. Yeah, <clears throat> I can explain about this uh, this scene. And it's it's new to explain. Uh, well, d during movie, they uh, go to court to uh, f for solve this problem. And they say about uh, their problem to judge, and yeah. but uh, in the end, uh, nothing. You know, they didn't do anything. They ju just they again they start talking yeah. together like uh, 100 years ago, yeah. in a small room, and they solve this problem without judge, without right. the system. Right. This it means the system doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know. So, uh, because this is it's very important for me, it's in Khayri Shivei Sonati tradition. This is very traditional yes. thing. Yes, okay. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and they understand each other and they yeah. help to each other again and they, they look to each other very kind, yes. you know. And we have two microphones in the house, I believe, and uh, if you could put your hand up if you want to ask a question and then when I choose you, if you could wait for the mic, then you will be recorded for posterity. And uh, we'll all be able to hear this. This gent in the middle, the glasses. Once I was in Iran, uh, I was discussing with the people about this film, and some were saying that, that the father in this film is a symbol of the society of Iran, which is trapped in the cultural, cultural situation, cultural poverty, the, the culture which all the times lie to each other. And there is no cure actually for this father, there is no cure for this society. And all the people are waiting for this society to be died actually. And I just wanted to ask a question about Mr. Farhadi, what is his interpretation about this viewpoint? Okay. So, Mike, uh, over. Uh, you go first. My name is Salam, I'm going to ask you about the Iranian people.
منم سلام عرض میکنم خدمت اسقر فرادی عزیز um, um, thanks to you and your um, inspiration for all of us a great honor um, my question is um, the whole movie a separation is a kind of a sadness and uh, you don't see any happiness through the whole movie and my question is um, was it on purpose <laughs> yeah I don't know why uh, it's like this. When I started writing and uh, writing for theater, for TV, uh, always I did like this because I think it's because uh, my personality and uh, something like this, I don't know. But I wish I change and one day I make it uh, not like this movie because when I you you watch this movie one two times but i watched this movie several times and for me it's not good A very sadness but it, that was funny but uh, it's my reaction to uh, my condition my situation you know when this situation change i will change by this situation that there is no way i have to make like this movie you know Yeah, it's it's very important question. Maybe, uh, for me, maybe in the uh, first time you see this image, you you say you you think it's very sad. But this this kind of movie is not very sad because after movie you you will think, and you will find answer, and after you um, finding answer, it will be you feel very good good feel. During watch the movie, you don't have good feel. And after that, when you find something in your mind, you, you find a good feeling. Maybe I'm not sure about that. And, and I think that the worldwide success of this film is due to the fact that when we see it, we don't think of Iran. We think of those human beings and those problems which are close to our own. It could be scenes from a marriage of Ingmar Bergman, for example. It's exactly the same kind of tensions and between the daughter and the father, whether she should be loyal to the father or whether she should betray him yeah. to, because it's just to, to tell the truth. All of these things are universal. And I think that's the reason why it's been such a huge success. Yeah, I think people everywhere, in every culture, in every country, every religion are very similar together. But, but media and mm, politics, they say, no, we are very different. This part are Muslim, this part are uh, yeah, lying. Yeah. No, emotional, love, and relation, relation, family, it's very similar everywhere. I went to Cuba. After Oscar, first my trip was in Cuba. And uh, uh, me and my friend, we went to an old city in Havana. And uh, we, were, we were looking for our for address. And, uh, and we asked uh, near the street, an uh, old woman was there. And we, uh, my friend asked her, where is that place? And after that, uh, she said that the, the, this, you have to go to this way, and you are foreign, and why, why you are here? And we, we said to her, I'm Jamaican, and a separation. And she said, oh, I, I watched this movie. And, and she explained about relationship between her and her daughter and uh, her uh, husband, uh, uh, and yeah. you know, in Cuba, in Havana, in a yeah. poor uh, area, mm -hmm. relationship is like in France, is like in Iran. And we have, and they, they just to show brainwash, yeah, they brainwash right. us, yeah, that's right. you know? Yes. But we are very sick. Another question? Hi, I have a mic back yes. here now. Uh, hi, Asga, uh, it's very good to see you again. I interviewed you in Berlin, uh, a year and a half ago, whatever. Um, 
congratulations on such wonderful films, of course. Um, I was very happy to see that in the UK, uh, About Ellie is being uh, distributed now, as it probably didn't have a big distribution uh, when it first um, was made, so I'm glad about that. Um, could you say uh, something about the themes of your next film? Um, and you are making it with, uh, I gather, with Bernice Bejo and Taha Rahim. And I wonder, could you say something about working with you know, established um, actors after having so much success with uh, you know, non-professional actors and Iranian actors and how you're coming to that challenge and I gather it's shooting in October in Paris. It'd be great if you could confirm that. <laughs> I, I wish uh, anybody asked this question, but you ask this because I prefer don't say anything about my new project and uh, it's a little soon. Next year we can talk about this movie. <laughs> but I just, uh, I can say, um, oh, we are, uh, it's uh, more than two months we are in rehearsals and each week we have two, three meet uh, and uh, we have rehearsals with Bernice and Tahar Rahim and Ali Mosafa, he's a very good uh, Iranian actor. And uh, I, I didn't change my style. I, I'm working like before in, in France with uh, actors. The, and yeah, it's, it's a big challenge because language. And there is, uh, it's, it's uh, difficult, but uh, I'm trying for finding a good way for solve this um, problem. Right now, uh, two, three weeks before shooting, uh, I have very good feeling, and uh, because I have very good crew, and part of crew are Iranian, and part of them are uh, my DOP and my son, and my uh, one of my main actors are Iranian and and the other part are uh, French and Italian. So we have to wait until next year. <laughs> so I've got the mic. Um, I will ask the question first in Persian and then I try to translate it to English. Salam alaikum, khidmat wa'i farhadi. Khil khushalam ki mibi namitun suzurikh. من خیلی جاها توی مقاله های مختلف توی روزنامه یا سایت های مختلف میخونم که سه تا فیلم اصلی که در موردش خیلی صحبت میشه درباره الی جدایی و چهارشنبه سوری خیلی وقتا از این به عنوان سگانه اسخر فرهادی نامورده میشه شما این سه تا فیلم رو به هم رب داده شده میبینید یا یعنی اینکه کاملا سه تا فیلم جداه چون برای من به عنوان یک بیننده میتونم یا حالت امضای از شما توی هر سه تا فیلم ببینم یعنی وقتی این سه تا فیلم رو یعنی میدونی که از یک سازنده است ولی واقعا چقدر به هم رد So he wants to know if uh, they're related, and he made the movie <coughs> together. Yeah. No, but uh, when when I start when I start uh, making uh, fireworks Wednesday, my third movie, uh, that time I didn't think after this movie I will make about any and after about any separation. Uh, for me, it's not a trilogy. But we can find the same, something very similar and very uh, in, in same kind, uh, same style in, um, with camera, with uh, telling a story in, in through this movie. But I think between all of my movies, from first uh, Dancing in the Dust and Beautiful City and other, uh, others, it's some themes is uh, same. Judge, judgment, uh, true, moral things is in all of these movies uh, you can find, you know. But it's not. Uh, I, I did that time. I didn't decide. Uh, I want make trilogy, three film based on a same theme. No, that time. 
because uh, I just I think about my next project, not after next. You know. Thank you very much. It is really nice to have you here in Zurich. And I am Iranian Swiss anthropologist, I studied anthropology and ethics. And the main questions that I can see in your film is the questions related to morality. I think you try to uh, construct a very sociological view of morality in your all of in all your films based on these three structure, um, um, these elementary structures, attachment to the family, uh, rule of religions and autonomy. Um, and the member of all of uh, the society or the people in your film, uh, they try to have, each, each person has his own uh, in particular view of morality. Yes. So, but morality is not individual. The question that I'm trying to find in your uh, films and as anthropologists, because I have done my work in the contemporary Iran, and also in contemporary Iran, is what is collective social morality in your film or in this society? همه شخصت های فیلم شما سعی می کنن اخلاقی که از نظر شخصی فکر می کنن درسته دنبالش برن حالا چه بر اساس مذهب چه بر اساس اون دیدگاهی که دارن ولی من فکر می کنم اخلاق مسئله فردی نیست یک اجتماع یک چیز مشترکی سوالی که من همیشه دارم yeah, یک مش... نرم مشترک می تونیم ما توی فیلم های شما yeah, no, no uh, it's, it's my question you know, in this movie and in, about Eli. Uh, what's the, uh, the moral, uh, what's the moral way? You know, we have to, if, if you um, believe God and uh, you be religious, uh, uh, you, you can say based on um, my Sharia, my, Sharia, religious law. Oh, yeah, oh, I, I go by the, this. If you know, you have to go other way. It's my qu question. In a society, who part of the society are religious, other part, they, they are not. Other, you know, what's the main moral uh, measure? Major. Major. So uh, it's it's my question in this movie, and we have to find a major for uh, moral. خیلی سخت برام که به انگلیسی توضیح بدم ولی میخوام بگم که اگر در یک جامعه ای یه بخشی از جامعه مذهبی باشن یه بخشی بر اساس وجدان فردی و یه بخشی دیگه بر اساس وجدان جمعی عمل میکنن. اون بحث اخلاقی بر اساس کدوم یکی از ایناست از این مترو مقیاس ها my question that in the society that some people and uh, develop their own morality based on religious law or some people i i can i say secular law or some people have another source of uh, their own morality. So I didn't, uh, I didn't want to give an answer to this question. So I try just to show uh, what is the uh, so source of source. morality for um, in this type of people in yeah. or this individual I, I, in my field. Yeah. And I told it's uh, also it's my question in this movie uh, that woman. Uh, she acted, she does based on religion and neither uh, does based on uh, so, social, social law. Civil law. Yeah. And which, which one is uh, better? Mm -hmm. Which one works in this situation? It's my question. We have to think and we have to find. I'm so sorry. Um, I wanted to say something about 
your film, I'm really excited that you're here in Zurich because for me, a Separation was the most modern film I saw last year. And um, that was um, what I wanted to say on the note of it being Iranian and talking Farsi. But what I really wanted to ask you was that what's striking in most of these scenes is that, the, that you shoot them in very closed in areas. And I was wondering, how do you work with your cameraman? Because it feels a little bit like cinema verité. We are just there observing, and that's what makes these films so incredibly emotional. And um, how do you shoot? I, we heard that you improvise and, 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 and you have your theater background, of course, with the actors. But then when you're, on, when you're shooting and when you're preparing to shoot, how do you work with your cameraman to get this incredible, dense feeling in these very closed in areas? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, every day before shooting, one, one day before shooting, I decided, uh, so my camera is here and uh, moves to other side. And, and uh, tomorrow morning, before starting shoot, uh, uh, me and Mahmoud, my DOP, we talked together and, uh, and every day we, s we sit together, we have to do like a documentary. It is not, there is not a camera. And uh, we, don't, uh, we don't want, when audience are watching this movie, they feel oh, there is a camera and we are watching this, this movie through uh, a camera, a camera, you know. So, uh, sometimes uh, what was very difficult because uh, you, you, you have a very good image and with good uh, cadre frame and very, there is a lot of harmony between colors and always we said to, to ourselves, no, it's not documentary, we have to change. You know, and uh, when you when camera is in your shoulder, it's very dangerous because you want to uh, move everywhere, and uh, I don't like this. You, you, there is in this movie, there's no, no shot that camera move without any subject in a, 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 the, any act uh, character. If character goes to this way, camera goes, and. Most of time, always, camera follow people. Camera not, it's not first camera and after character. It's classic cinema. In this kind of movie, camera is after character and just follow them during the story, you know. And other thing is very important. I want, uh, the, by camera, I don't uh, make judgment by camera. If I take a close-up, very <coughs> big shot, very uh, cl like close-up from this character, and medium shot, or full shot, or long shot from this character, it means there's a difference and by, there's a judgment by me, uh, by camera between them. And camera is very fair between all characters. You can't say this camera is near to this character and far from that character. I tried for this uh, style. Sometimes, uh, yeah, like uh, in last scene, uh, that guy uh, was in the kitchen uh, from night until morning. Uh, that guy, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> N near the morning, he, he, he did. <laughs> but sometimes, no, uh, two, three shots. I don't like a lot of shots because uh, you have good picture, good image, but you don't have good mm, feel and you lose a lot of things. Thank you, and uh, I, I want to uh, thank yes. my friend Fariba. I, I ask her, please come with me. Maybe sometime I need to uh, ask you a word, and she comes. Thank you, and my friend Fariba. Uh, 
Uh, I was during my pre-production and very busy. And several months ago, he said to me, you have to come to Zurich. And at that time, I, just, I said, OK, I will come. And I, two, three weeks ago, he called me and he said, you said me and you promised me you have to come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we have to thank to Fireworks. I'm here because he tried and he pushed me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.